Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Ryan and Russ Show. On today's episode, Kerr Kresha commits to West Virginia. The West Virginia women's basketball team has a new coach. And the West Virginia baseball team wins two out of three from Kansas State. All ahead on the Ryan and Russ Show. And we welcome you back to your source for West Virginia sports. I'm Rambling Rush. He's Moneyline Mac. We are the Ryan and Rush Show, and we're getting right into it. Ryan, news just broke. Kirk Kresha heading to West Virginia, heading to good old Morgantown. We beat out Nebraska. We worried he would join Sean Miller again and Xavier. He decided to go with the old Hall of Famer, Bob Huggins, and he's coming to Morgantown. Yes, he is. And this is a good get by the by Hugs and the staff. I mean, early. Uh, getting in here at 5.2 assists per game, led the Pac-12, and a guy that's just a seasoned guy and, and played in a lot of big games, obviously at Arizona being a one and two seed over the last two years in the March Madness. So a lot of experience coming to Morgantown. Yeah, and don't forget, he was just a point guard for, for Arizona, um, a two seed in the tournament, unfortunately. Well, I guess unfortunately for Arizona, uh, Princeton beat him, and Princeton, of course, had that great uh, 15 seed run. Um, but of course, a great season for Arizona, the Pac-12 winners, as you were saying. Um, I re- we reached out uh, to to Jay Coons, director of player personnel, NIL deals, to discuss this. And first, said a couple things, and I thought a couple things that really struck me. Number one, um, he really was complimentary towards Keedy Johnson, Eric Stevenson, Emmett Matthews, uh, Trey Mitchell, the guys that came here, especially Keedy, who stuck around here after that tough season the year before. Um, to really just lay down the foundation to bring West Virginia back to the tournament, to make this place a place where you could get a Kerr Kresha coming here. And then Jay, he said, you know, maybe he's the one that kind of initiates it within his role to reach out and see who's available, but was really complimentary towards, you know, our man, Josh, the rest of the coaching staff for, for closing out the deal, as he said. Uh, And then of course, Bob Huggins being Bob Huggins with, you know, his resume speaks for himself, but yeah, even though, you know, he's, getting up a little bit in age, you know, still not missing a beat out there doing his thing. So great, great get by the West Virginia staff. I know, you know, your former colleagues and Hey, it's a, it's a different era here in in West Virginia and the rest for, you know, the NCAA with NIL deals, as we talked about this with Ethan a lot and us over and over again, but Hey, they're, they're, they're doing the right things, making the right moves. and, And this is a great start one. This is a great start. And two, we haven't heard a lot of other, um, players wanting to hit the transfer portal either. So the culture, the basketball culture is getting built back here. Yeah. And we talked about it with Ethan last week when we did our portal preview and go check out that episode. That was a good exclusive uh, episode with Ethan Bach, where when we get guys on campus in Morgantown, we have a really good success rate at getting these guys to commit. It's just about knocking down that barrier of sometimes the false narrative of what West Virginia is on the outside looking in. And once we get them here in Morgantown, they find out it really is a special place. The people really care. You're the pro athletes here because there's no professional team. And obviously getting Kerr here early before even the final four even ended is a uh, good get and a good early um early start to uh, the portal season, which is filling up quickly as I'm sure everybody is following on social media. Absolutely. And Hey, West Virginia is in a, in a good place. As we talked about the, the departures were expected, you know, Josiah Jamel, you know, of course, like we said, we, we wish them the best. We're, we're thankful for what they did here, providing, you know, being on the bench, providing some depth, but yeah, we're, we're cheering for them. Go, go get that playing time, go get what you deserve guys. And trust me, once a mountaineer, always a mountaineer will be cheering for you. But Again, no, no key key losses. And another thing that Jay brought up that I forgot to say earlier with his comment is, you know, they, they talked to Joe Tucson and, you know, someone like Kerr coming in, you know, playing time starts coming up in the air and Joe Tucson being the team player. He is being that, you know, showing that good West Virginia blood and, you know, being the team player and, and school first guy said, go out and get him. Let's do this thing. So it even speaks to, just, just the culture that's, that's being rebuilt. And, and, you know, of course there's adjustments coming off the pandemic, as we were saying, NIL transfer portals, a, a lot happened and a lot. So, Hey, this is a great start, man. It feels good to be in the driver's seat and, and we're rolling, man. We're rolling, Ryan. Yeah. And I, Joe, it's ironic because Joe came in last year and the guy that really recruited Joe in terms of headed his visit was Kedron Johnson. Keedy was the mm-hmm. only guy that, played impactful minutes from that previous team the year before that 
and Keedy was all in on getting Joe Tucson and uh, outside looking in, people be like, oh, those two guys play the same position. But I think we just saw it with UConn too, winning the national championship. Everybody kept saying they got two of everything. And when West Virginia basketball is at its best under Bob Huggins is when you got two of everything, when you're six through six through 10, six through 11 are just as good as your one through five, just like the press Virginia year. So yeah, I think it's really cool that Joe was all in on getting a guy like Kerr and getting even more depth in that backcourt. Cause we, we see a foul trouble injuries, the Big 12 just being a gauntlet. So, yeah, you got to have a lot of depth in this league. And, hey, that's something we pride ourselves on is whether it is Press Virginia or just kind of this, uh, you know, the West Virginia you see today where it's more picking up guys at the half court. It's, hey, we're depth. We are a deep team. You, we're, you know, your your guys are going to have to beat our 10 guys. So just shows you more athletic bodies, more, more you know, guys that can handle the ball in there. Uh, I think this is a big pickup, especially on the offensive end. Um, but speaking kind of on the other side of things, Ryan, how do you think the the Kerr pickup relates to to defense? Do we need to go out and get some more defensive guys? How how does this domino then affect the rest of these dominoes that we we need to bring in and look at? So I think it's well documented that on social media with everybody saying Kerr's not a defensive guy, and I mean. Arizona is not really a defensive program. So I think that's where kind of that narrative can get a little bit overblown, but there was the same narrative last year with Eric Stevenson saying that he didn't guard anybody. And I think when guys are older fourth and fifth year guys, he'll be entering his fourth year of college. I know he still will have two years of eligibility. You start learning angles more. And if he, he doesn't have to be the best on ball defender. We're not asking him to be Kedron Johnson on the ball. I don't think that, we're going to see a guy like Kedron Johnson on the ball uh, for quite a while just with how elite he was. But if you can be a really, really good help defender, mm-hmm. that just helps your that just helps your team. And I think you become a better help defender the more and more you play. And we've seen that with Hugs, Hugs' defense and how it's structured where it depends so much on ball pressure and help, being on the help line, as he calls it, um, making teams play three on five. So I think it, the key with him defensively is being a really, really good help team defender. And then I think with just the angles and the reps playing against UCLA and the other elite teams, just having the angles to make up for maybe the lack of foot speed on the defensive end that he might have. Yeah, it, it, it's good. I think Eric Stevenson's the the perfect uh, analogy it, is, you know, we, we were hearing that same thing off season. I'll tell you what mm-hmm. is I'm not saying obviously Keedy was our best defender. We kept calling him the glue all year. But man, Eric, Eric was out for blood. And hey, Bob Huggins, he, he's if there's a guy, you know, we br- bring up the all Hall of Famer. Why he's a Hall of Famer? And one of the reasons is if there's a guy to get under your skin, to get you to defend, to light a fire under your, you know what? It's him. And and Kerr knows this too. You know, p- people already know this. So yeah, and and I think that's really important that you touch on it. That Hugs is going to make him guard. We know that Hugs has won what nine hundred plus games not by accident. And everybody, when you say Bob Huggins, what do you think of his teams? Defense, toughness, and rebounding. So he's going to make Kerr guard, and he's going to force him watch film. Uh, drill, they drill defensively ever, more than any team in the country. And I think like Arizona, they don't. I'm not saying that they don't care about defense, but they don't put as strong an emphasis on it as West Virginia does, as other defensive teams in this Big 12 do. They want to just play fast and outscore you. So you're kind of a product of your environment. So him mm-hmm. coming, getting a new, fresh uh, fresh perspective, I think he's going to become a better defender. One thing I do like about kind of this this transfer portal era is is I think there was always, right, an NFL free agency, NBA free agency. Yeah. There was always this like, like you're almost like, it, it, you're still in that fantasy world, right, Ryan? Where you're like, oh, we got this guy. We got that guy. So like everything in your mind, you're just playing out. So it really builds up that optimism. It really builds up that excitement. And now because of this, you kind of get the the same type of thing now in, in college sports. So dude, this is, like I said, we're in the driver's seat, big pickup. You know, we're looking at Hughley now out of out of Pittsburgh. So dude, we pick him up, man. Watch out. Watch out for West Virginia. Good good luck to the new, as Bob Huggins said on the interview the other day, good luck to the guys that uh, just joined the Big 12. You're in for a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, no doubt. And I mean, Kerr brings an element that it, it's a unique element to have a guy that could be a three to one assist to turnover ratio guy. And he's seasoned, like I said, like he he's really good off ball screens. He can make shots off ball screens. And he just had has had so many reps being in his fourth year of college 
where he knows to hit the roll guy when he needs to hit him. Mm -hmm. He knows to hit the replace guy when he's going to be there. He knows where the help's coming from just because he's been in college basketball for so long. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be great. IQ guy. Absolutely. And Hey, those high IQ guys usually work out with high IQ coaches. So we got, we got two of the same and um, look forward. Like we said, this is, this is kind of, well, I guess the first domino would be that the, the key, the role players staying here. And it looks like so far, you know, they are, like we said, the, with the Tucson quote from, from Jay Coon. So uh, hopefully that remains second domino Kerr here, you know, maybe Hughley, hopefully the third, maybe another guy or two. So we'll see how it goes. Looking, definitely looking forward to it again. Um, moving on, Ryan, not only in the men's program, you know, this great off season news uh, along the women's program, uh, Mark Kellogg, you know, ugly, Ugly, uh, we talked about it with Don leaving for Minnesota. Um, just ugly. I, I guess that's all I have yeah. to say left. I'm basically speechless with it left. But then, hey, they go out higher. Mark Kellogg, which I know you're not the biggest fan of Stephen F. Austin because it will, for obvious <laughs> reasons. But hey, this is this is a great guy to get from there. Eight seasons, uh, won two conference titles, stacked up a record of 195 and 55. Hopefully not another one and done guy here. Hopefully, you know, comes here, establishes and builds a culture. But I'll tell you what, man, there, there's just optimism on all fronts if, for, for both the West Virginia basketball teams. Yeah, and I actually have some friends in the Stephen F. Austin athletic department because they were the same administration when I was at Austin P. the athletic director, Ryan Ivey and, and company. And they, they had nothing but good things to say about Coach Kellogg. Really good basketball coach. His record speaks for himself. And he, he's paid his dues, he's earned his stripe, and now he's got a heck of an opportunity with, with uh, good facilities, and he's going to be coaching in one of the premier leagues in America, even on the women's side as well. I think this also speaks to, to our athletic director, Ren Baker, is, is yep. great, great hire by him. People are, I mean, this is such a good hire. I mean, you know, Pat McAfee. Was, was bringing it up on his show with Pac-Man Jones. Is he, you know, he put him right up there. He likes her. One of the first things Ren did was come in, reach out to, to Pat, get the alumni. You know, the guy can fundraise money. Money's coming into Morgantown, as Pat said. And, and you know, we've seen it. You know, we, we both met Ren on the sidelines before the Kansas game here in Morgantown. Great guy, shook our hand, looked us in the eye, asked us how we felt about things. Li like, listen to us. It, it's... Uh, we're Morgantown, you know, things are, it, you know, got a little fuzzy there for a little bit this past couple of years, but every college, every program, every even, you know, professional team goes through it. Right. Ryan. But, you know, we went through ours and I think we're on the up and up. I think we're in good hands. You know, we still have the stability of someone like Bob Huggins. We have the innovation of someone new like Rim Baker. And then we got these up and up guys, uh, you know, like Mark Kellogg coming in, you know, we're getting this, the, the previous alumni like Pat McAfee, Pac-Man Jones coming in and supporting and giving on a, such a national stage, just that West Virginia love again, because, you know, I'm sure Pat McAfee was a little upset with everything going on here for a while. And, you know, we get it, you know, it's kind of a weird ending, but it, in a good place, man, it, it's, it's a good day to be a Mountaineer, Ryan. Yes, it is. And, and Ren's the right guy for the job. He's, he's on a bunch of committees. I was actually watching the NIT final the other night with North Texas and UAB and he obviously he came from North Texas, but he wasn't there just because it was his hire, Grant McCaslin. He's on the he's the head of the NIT committee. So he was right there presenting the trophy. And I was like, hey, there's Ren. I didn't even know he was there. So, yeah, no, he's he's well connected. He knows what he's doing. He's innovative, like you said, and he's going to he's going to bring in some money. Yeah. And that's what for from a couple of my sources, sorry little audio issues, but for my sources as well is, uh, I, I heard, um, had a couple of people reach out to me and say that one thing he was good at, at North Texas, which they just won the NIT, right? His old yeah, school. It, yeah. It was ironic. Old, yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. he's in it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, now I'm putting the whole, now it's all coming together in my head. Right. When, when that thing, that the light bulb moment, right, Ryan. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, that guy could fundraise there. So that's exactly today's when it really is all about the almighty dollar. Here we are, and we got the guy for it. So welcome, Mark Kellogg. Keep doing what you're doing, Rim Baker, um, and and just keep rolling. And to even go, you know, th a third time's not – I guess not third time's a charm, but for the third good news going on, Ryan, uh, West Virginia baseball. We had Noah on the show last week, uh, Beer Nick, Beer B Nick. Quick side note, everyone, we just – 
Ryan and I, like a lot of people, can struggle with pronunciations just here and there, whether guests of the show. We, we know all about you. We'll, we'll say great things about you. We know all your stats up and down. Your name, like, we, we, do you know how many times you had to go over Cresha, like, Cresha before this show? And who knows? We're still not getting it right. At least we have an off season to do that. So yep. check out the show with Noah. We're probably going to be calling, and then we'll call him Kerr. That's why we just went right to the first name, right? So. I, hey, I got it from Hugs because Hugs is really bad with pronunciation with uh, opponents, players. He can tell you everything just like I can, <laughs> that what they're going to do, they're going to score over their right shoulder. They shoot this percent from the foul line, but I can't pronounce your last name. Sorry. <laughs> so if I butchered your name, I apologize. It's nothing personal. <laughs> it's not the first and it will not be the last time. But no. anyway, uh, Noah was on the show last week. We had our whole college baseball show. Awesome show. That was a, absolutely a blast. Uh, West Virginia baseball did what Noah predicted they would do when two out of three in Manhattan opened the big 12 um, with, you know, against Can in Kansas state in Manhattan. Uh, great, great series for them. Go against Marshall tonight. Um, and then, and then back to, back to the big 12 schedule. So, Hey, West Virginia baseball is rolling. Uh, Ryan, I know this next topic, you want to razz me a little bit, so I'm here. Let, yeah, just and, and real, quick, fan. Uh, real quick with uh, W Baseball, I saw a bracketologist. I didn't even know they had those for college baseball. West Virginia is currently a projected a 2C, like Noah said. So, nice. Um, we just got to keep winning series, as they say in baseball. And speaking of winning series, oh, how about those buckos, man? They go to Fenway and sweep them. I, I know the Red Sox are down this year, but the, this is a good start for the Pirates, a young Pirates team this year. I know, man. I know. And hey, hey, here's the thing. It's like I have nothing, obviously, against the Pirates. Not a big Penguins fan. Not a big Steelers fan. Obviously, my family being from Maine, having a farm up there, etc. You know, I've kind of always felt bad for the Pirates. You always feel bad for someone until they – and then it's like it's like my, my fiance, big Packers fan. She's like, oh, I just feel bad for the Lions and Dan Campbell. Well, until they beat you twice, right? So, In got sweet by the Pirates. Yeah, exactly. So, one, two lessons learned. One, Red Sox, I'll say it here first, are not good this year. They suck. Honestly, the Red Sox haven't been good. What Here's what happened, Ryan, is last year, it was, it was the second weekend in July. I think we took two out of the three from the Yankees. We came back on Sunday Night Baseball, all-star break hit, and then we were done. Like, it was done. We haven't been the same since at, at, at all. So, but also great for the Pirates. Um, a couple of us will be up going up to PNC. The Ryan and Russia will be at PNC Park for the West Virginia Pit baseball game. And then uh, that's the same week of the Gold and Blue game. Ryan and I will be there. We'll also be there. I think they play TCU. I, they, they, yeah, I knew it was one of the Texas schools, uh, which really narrows it down in the Big 12. Yes, they play TCU that week and we'll be at the baseball game that Friday night. So catch us. You, fi you find the Ryan and Russia show places. To come catch up with us. But hey, yeah, good, good for the Pirates, Ryan. I got to give credit where credit's due. It's good for them, honestly. And when, when we were in school here, they were good. Like when McCutcheon yeah. was there and stuff. Um, yeah, no. So I, it's it'd be good to see the Pirates get good again because that playoff atmosphere, I'll never forget when Cueto dropped the ball. And then the next pitch, uh, who was it? it was Russell Martin hit the home run. And That's right. that place was going bonkers. So That's right. yeah, go Buckos. There we go. Go Bucks when they're not playing the Red Sox. But I guess that's over now. So now I can go yeah. back to cheering for the Pirates. Um, Ryan, um, to finish up the episode, as we talked about, we had a, a lot of good news in the role uh, in a row with Kerr, you know, Mark Kellogg, Rim Baker's doing great. West Virginia baseball's on a roll. It's, it's a good time in Morgantown. Um, I know this next topic really hits home for you, so I'm, I'm yeah. definitely going to turn it over to you, unfortunately. Um, and we really want to respect the Han family. We really want to respect Billy. So we're not going to, you know, we, we kind of know what's going on on the inside, but it's, it's not our news to announce. Um, unfortunately, Billy Hahn's going through some stuff right now, some health concerns and um, really needs our thoughts and prayers. Um, like I said, Ryan, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you. Cause I, I know you worked with him. Yeah, it was, it was a tough day getting that news uh, last night. Obviously Billy uh, was with hugs for, a decade plus he was at Maryland before that part of that national championship run uh, played at the university of Maryland, but he really was one of the figures in the community here in Morgantown and it's well documented. Um, his wife, Kathy, the health struggles that she's beat cancer multiple times. Um, and, and just, he always says great day to be alive, count your blessings. And he really means that because I mean, his, what they said, his wife has no, had no chance to survive. She beat cancer multiple times and, it really like 
like you said, it's not our place to announce what's going on with Billy, but it, it really did hit home because he was the one that initiated me becoming a manager. I reached out to him because he was in that director of operations job at the time. And he, he put me, he said, come on in, we'll, we'll interview you. And he actually didn't hire me initially. He said, we're full this year, but if you just stick around or, or volunteer, maybe we'll find something for you. And I obviously uh, worked for the secretary, Debbie Williams for the first year. And, but if it wasn't for Billy not answering his, or if it wasn't for Billy answering his emails, I never would have had a chance to get my foot in the mm -hmm. door. A lot of people really have helped me along the way. And he's one of the main people. So Thoughts and prayers with Billy, the yo dog, as we call him. Um, a lot of former managers, former players tweeting out. He's he's had an impact on all of us, and we're pulling for you, dog. We are pulling for you, Billy. It's a, a story, Ryan, too, I'll, I'll never forget was your when you were a manager here. It was senior day, and, you know, they they do everyone, not just the basketball players. And you got announced and walked through, and then your your whole family, grandparents, Parents, step parents, they were all all in town for you. Um, went to a restaurant and all hung out to celebrate you. And uh, Billy Hahn came and and came to yeah. support you and say hi and congratulate you on all your work and everything um, that you did. And that's something that you know when you see kind of that top level reaching down to the bottom level, it um, special people do that. So um, yeah. um, you know, I've kind of known him more from the outside. You know, I've had a few few very minor conversations within myself, but I know he's been a mentor to you. I know he's, he's been your guy. Um, so sorry, of course, sorry to, you know, with the family and everything going on, obviously we're pulling for him. Um, yep. Well, that's, that's all that needs to be said there just out of respect for the family, but we're, we're with you, Ryan. We love you, man. And yep. So in honor in honor of uh, the yo dog, it's a great day to be alive. Count your blessings. He said that every morning. So he really meant it in You're pulling for you, dog pulling for you. Anyway, um, we have our next show coming out. Actually, we'll be interviewing Morgantown highs basketball coach, Dave Tallman. He will be on. We're actually recording tonight. Um, we'll probably release it later this week. Ryan, we'll, we'll find a good time for that. Um, and so that's what's coming up next. Uh, it may be the off season, right? Well, the off season for, for football and basketball, but Hey, sure. Sure. Doesn't feel like it. So a lot going on. Love you all. As, as Ryan says, count, count, you know, coach Han said, count your blessings. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. And it's a great day to be a mountaineer. Love you all. And, and have a good day. Go Mountaineers.